Hey guys, welcome back to Vince Vell Custom. So today we are going to do a repair on a hollow raptor statue. I don't know much more than that. I think it's a sideshow item. I'm not really sure. But anyway, it's basically a dinosaur and it's hollow and broken and we're going to repair it. So you can kind of see the inside of how hollow it is. Uh, you know, this is called rotocasting. Basically what it is, you uh, make your mold of your statue and you either do it by hand or by a machine where you rotate it, or probably like an automated machine. I'm pretty sure the factories have like 10 or 15 molds on a rig, and what it does is they pour in a resin and it just rotates until it all cures up. So what happens is as it's rotating, uh, the resin is going around the outside in the shell and it creates a hollow cast. That's kind of like roto casting, and that's kind of how you do this stuff. Um, that's why in the inside it looks like, you know, drips and wets and, you know, just kind of stuff curing as it goes. Now, it's a very clean break. It's really not that bad. Uh, once it's kind of attached, it's actually clean. So we can kind of get away with this one uh, where if I create a, a wall on each side and I attach it and then kind of clean it up, we're good to go. But sometimes a lot of hollow stuff like crack in pieces, so you got to kind of put it together like, you know, a puzzle. So this one we're kind of lucky on. Nice, fairly clean break. We could kind of get in there and tweak it a bit. Now, I'm going to use this fiberglass stuff. Somebody that I've... Uh, um, known throughout the hobby for a long time. He was actually able to get me a lot of these things, so I kind of keep them for when I need it for projects like this. Uh, so this is your basic fiberglass. If you break a finger, a wrist, or ankle, or whatever, you know, you pretty much wet this stuff, you wrap it around you, and it's basically a cast. So this is kind of the same stuff. It just actually is what it is, too. You know, he, uh, the, uh, knows the place where he can order this stuff. So he sent me a couple. I have a bunch. And what we're going to do is we're going to try to create it in here. And create a wall um basically what i want to try to do is i don't want to create a wall in here and then have anything fall down and then you also need to get all that like you know something sounds like it's rumbling inside we don't want that uh so i'm going to try to use this fiberglass to create a wall here and create a wall here and then what we're going to do is we're going to go on to some other material freeform air from smooth on and we're going to shove that in there so this way we get sort of a good wall on each side and then what I could do is I can use Magisculpt or Aves or whatever and kind of attach them and really make this secured. Um, something like this, if you don't want to go this route and you don't want to go crazy, get all these materials, you can use glue and glue it back together. But the problem is uh, something like this, because this is actually fairly heavy up here. So it seems to me that this could be fairly solid while this is lighter. And if you put this on here with just glue, you run the risk of it breaking again down the line. Because glue can hold things together, but in reality, that glue might wear down on you over time. It can snap. So you really want to make sure something's secured. And we want to give a little bit more meat into him without making it too heavy. So some of the materials I got are going to make it fairly light, but kind of secure it at the same time. So what I'm going to do first is... Uh, I might try to see if I could put some of this fiberglass in there first and sort of kind of create a fairly set up wall. Uh, you know, I might have to put some glue in there and I might have to make sure some of this kind of attaches to the sides fairly well. Uh, I could also go in there with some sticks and glue sticks in there, but I really don't want to go that route because I don't know if I'll be able to keep it. So we'll, we'll see how this goes. Uh, first things first is I'll open this up. I'll get some gloves on. I'll kind of wrap this up a little bit too. I don't want to get any of this, uh, uh, you know, fiberglass residue on any of the statue. I don't want to get it all over my desk because this stuff will go all over because it's not like, you know, the way this stuff works is when you break a finger or wrist, you wrap it around and then you use soapy water on it and it cures up like that. But I want to be cutting pieces off and then the scissors get messy. It's, it's a whole big thing of a mess. So let me get set up. And then what we'll do is we'll come back and we'll try to start getting at least a wall built inside. Okay, so this stuff is uh, fairly tacky. Uh, these are some old crappy scissors. Uh, if you have a Harbor Freight Tools near you, they usually have these uh, free coupons. So you can get like, you know, stuff that's good throwaway items. So I've had these scissors for a while. They sort of kind of cut, but they don't. So these are kind of good to get all kind of tacky and stuff. So take some water. Get some water on here. This is my old painting cup, so I'm just kind of going to be throwing it away and get a new one anyway because it gets sticky stuff all over it. So what we're going to try to do is we're going to sort of see if we can do this. Now, I might have to hold it a bit 
just to sort of kind of start creating a wall. It's not going to really stick, you know, it's not going to like, you know, really stick to any of this stuff. Um, but once it starts curing up, it starts to get harder and it will stay. And then I could put some glue in there if I need to. So, as you can see, it's falling down. So what we'll do is we'll grab our little glue. And what we'll do is we'll grab this piece. And we'll throw a bunch of glue here. Just throw a bunch of glue right here, like so. And we'll just throw it up there, like that. Okay. And then what we'll do is we'll grab some of this glue here. Some over here, and then boom, like that. That is a good start to a wall. All right. Now, if you have your Insta set, it starts to get fairly hard after a little while. You know, it'll start kind of getting there. So, you don't want to rush it too crazy, but. You don't want to sit here and let this piece kind of cure on you after a few hours. This, I think once you open up the container, the bag, it starts to really uh, kind of go on you. So what we'll do is kind of dip this in the water. I like the fiberglass stuff for filling, but I really don't like you know how it kind of leaves a crazy residue um, but it's great for kind of doing this type of armature stuff once we fill it in with the freeform air it'll kind of hold a lot better so what I'm doing is trying to so what we can do is we can squeeze some more glue here And some key points. Some glue over here. Gotta make sure you don't get any glue on the the broken part, at least not yet. It's starting to harden up. Goes fairly fast. Alright, so we definitely want to kind of get up here now. So we'll grab a little piece. Now the first piece I put down already, it's kind of curing up fairly fast. So I don't mind that that little loop is there, it kind of will help too. And by putting this in here too, it actually will help sort of kind of secure this area a little bit. Not much, but a little bit. I'm just kind of jamming it into some of the areas here to help secure it a little bit more.
All right, I'm gonna cut one little more piece and then we save the rest for the other part. So I don't really know like where you could come across this fiberglass stuff. Maybe you can probably just order it on eBay or something or Amazon. Um, I'm not really sure where, you know, because I know it is for like, you know, hospitals. But I guess if you know somebody who can get it for you or, or some kind of a, uh, I don't know, what you call it. Supplier that does healthcare stuff or whatever. Okay, so I think uh, that's fairly good. That should hold up fairly well. So a little bit more water. Alright, so I'm probably going to have to change my gloves because I don't want to handle the head now. Uh, I'm going to let this cure up overnight because it's kind of the end of the night anyway. Um, and I want to make sure this stuff really cures up fairly well because if I put that uh, freeform air in, that stuff gets very hot and it could expand a little bit. So I want to make sure everything is pretty much ready and good to go. So that is pretty good. So I'll change the gloves, we'll get the head, and we'll get that all filled up. Alright, so we got the head. Uh, so we got plenty left. Um, can start curing on you fairly fast. You gotta, can't let this stuff sit around open forever. Um, one of the things I'm shocked about this head is uh, the person who had it actually only broke the head and didn't actually break any of the teeth, which is shocking. So that's actually pretty interesting. Actually lucky too. So we're probably going to have to shove a lot of this in here, but we'll kind of throw some glue in anyway. doesn't have to be clean, it can be fairly messy. Another thing too, since I'm using water, it actually is a good thing that uh, we'll let this dry. Because if you throw in some water and there's a lot of moisture in there and then you throw in some chemical stuff like the freeform air and you don't let that moisture out. So just thinking as I go. Always be, always take your time. Be safe. The reason why I'm doing this is for a few things. One... Um, it saves on materials, it helps support a little bit, and uh, it's just uh, safer for uh, hollow stuff. I mean, you know, if, if the person wanted to go crazy and actually redo the whole entirety inside and fill it in, that is a possibility, but you're looking at lots and lots and lots of material. And the way things are going these days, as of this video, materials are going up like 7%, so... Got to be careful. Now this one I don't mind shoving it in there. That's kind of fine. Because you know what's going to happen is when we put the freeform air around in here and fill it in, that's going to lock it into place pretty well too. But we'll get to all that. What I think I'm going to do is since we're kind of near the end of the roll, I'm going to pull the bottom part out, which got more uh, seems to be have more tackiness and more uh, of the residue. Because I can't save this now that I opened it. And I don't have anything else to use, so. Let's see.
There's many other materials you can use to do this, what I'm doing. Uh, if you want, you can use tin foil, and then you can use the freeform air. You can use Durham's putty. Uh, you can use um, stuffing. Uh, it, it doesn't really matter as long as whatever you put in there will lock it into place and um, won't expand, won't crack anything, and won't cause any issues. And that should be good. Um, touching the other part now, that's all hardened up. I mean, that hardened up pretty well. I might actually uh, just throw the rest of this that I have sitting over here into the other part and then uh, be done with it. Alright, so I'm just going to use what I have left. Let's just use it. Save on some material. Because that's in there pretty well. You know, there's just might as well just use it. We'll kind of shove it in there pretty well. Let's see if this is too much or if it's going to work. And that should be fairly good. We'll just kind of make sure we play with it a bit. Get it in there. Yeah, that's perfect. All right, so we won't use as much material, and this should work out pretty well. Now the cool thing about this uh, fiberglass that you use for broken uh, body parts is it is drummable. You can cut it. You could go in there and you can slice it up and cut it if you need to. So if you accidentally put too much in, if it's hitting the edge or whatever, you can go in there and sort of do what you need to do. So it is not the end of the world if you do put too much or you didn't pay attention and it went somewhere else. Seems to get a little bit of warmth to the touch, but nothing like where it's going to get hot and burn you or anything like that. Alright, so, between now and to the next step, if for some odd reason I'm, I don't get to this tomorrow, whatever, because this is kind of like, you know, I'm just kind of starting it right now. If I have some extra aves or magnoscope, I can start throwing it around the edging around there. Just kind of throw it around that edging, just to kind of lock that, you know, hold that stuff in place. And see, that it's, it's getting hard. It works out pretty well. So, yeah, we'll let this kind of care up for tonight, and then by the time we come back, we might have some material in there already, we might not, um, or we might just start mixing up the freeform air and threw it in, but we'll kind of go over that in the next couple steps. Okay, so I got some aves. Uh, what's going to happen between now and to the next step is uh, I'm going to sort of kind of lock this in place a little bit better, only because I trust aves a little bit more to grab resin than uh, the um, uh, freeform air. Uh, but like I said, I don't want this aves to go to waste, so I'm just going to mix up some of the aves and sort of just kind of go around the edging like so. Just kind of lock it in there and just go around the whole piece. I'm just going to try not to hit any of the edge here but just all around there. So uh, I'm just going to get this done. Hopefully I got enough to do a lot of this and then uh, we should be able to get the freeform air. So it's actually the next day and this stuff is hard as a rock and it's pretty much locked in there. Okay, so uh, as you can see, uh, we put some uh, aves around the areas on that side and on this side. I also dremeled in holes. Uh, what I'm going to do right now is mix up some freeform air. Uh, it's basically made from smooth on. 
it's like Abe's and Magic Sculpt. You mix A and B together in equal amounts, and you have a few, you know, you can have an hour or so work time and a couple hours of cures and everything like that. So this stuff is a little more fluffy. It's lighter. Uh, but when it mixes, though, it sort of gets sort of, um, gets like a lot of residue everywhere. So you got to be very careful with it if you're handling something that's painted or if you're just handling a sculpt and then... If you're not paying attention, you don't sand it all down and clean it up again, you'll get skunk all over the air place. Uh, when it does cure, it's fairly durable. Uh, it's not as durable as Aves or Magiscope, but it's uh, sort of like cheaper in a sense where this two gallon kit here is like uh, 90 or or $100. So with this type of a kit, you can actually use a lot of this. I like to use this stuff for filling in hollow statues, uh, filling in big bulky areas and then sculpt Aves and Magiscope onto it. Um, it's also good for bases, like if you want to create like a sandy, a rock base, or uh, you want to kind of create uh, sort of shapes on, like on a base. I think this stuff is really great. Um, when you do mix it together, I use water, I use rubber gloves, uh, and then if I really want to like sculpt something with it, I'll use baby powder because this stuff will stick to all your tools and brushes. So you got to kind of, you know, go with that route on it. But it does work. You just gotta, it's just another material you got to get used to. So... I'm going to mix up enough for like for like almost like a golf ball or a softball or a baseball. Uh, put some here, put some here. We're going to put some glue around the edges and we're going to glue it together and let it cure up for the day. And then after that, what we'll have to do is we'll have to go back in and kind of clean up the seam and everything the best we can with whatever. But so far the break is fairly clean, so we might be able to get away with it. Now, hopefully... Uh, with any glue I put around there, it doesn't squeeze out too much because it's kind of be it's kind of a bulky item to handle and put glue on and then use it and then take it wipe it off. So it's it's a little bit tricky. So I might have to go in, but I'm gonna try to put the glue in the inside, not the outside. So this way, when it squeezes, hopefully it's squeezed inward instead of outward. So we'll see how it goes. So I'm gonna mix up the freeform air. Uh, I'll put that in there. I'll kind of smush it in there. I'll try to make sure I'm getting enough where. It sort of grabs on both edges, but doesn't uh, squeeze out of it. You know, we'll just kind of create like, you know, just in the main area, throw some glue and go from there. So, uh, it's been the next day, and what I did is I had a chance to go into the garage and go over this piece. Uh, I just went around looking at this. Um, making sure there's nothing else uh, broken, uh, kind of going over some of the areas. I went in with my uh, Dremel tool that's basically, it was an old Dremel bit that was nubbed down to like a point and it's still good to use it to go in there and sort of kind of clean up some stuff. So there was one or two spots where glue actually came out and went, went a little bit above, but most of it is just sort of me kind of trying to follow the hatching a little bit and sort of kind of create that little bit of skin ripples and stuff. So. I really won't know what I need to do until I start hitting it with paint. Uh, I might be able to hide some of the cracking if there is anything extra with some paint. If I put some thicker paint on it, we'll see what goes on from there. Uh, but I'm just kind of been looking over it, making sure there's nothing else I'm missing. But otherwise, it's looking pretty good. Uh, the only thing now is I got to recreate these two fingernails that it broke off here. So I'm going to do that right now. And then hopefully uh, after those things are fixed, uh, we can start touching up all the paint and get them at least looking uh, close to new. So what I'm doing is some tests. I'm trying to find like the basic color, the base color at least. Uh, it's kind of a little bit tricky. Uh, the other problem too is this thing is so large. So it's kind of a little bit difficult to kind of get it. So all I want to do is just kind of getting like a base coat in those cracks. Just kind of get underneath there and get that color. So it's kind of like a grayish almost. So I got to kind of mix in some bright colors I got here. It's got a little bit of greens in there.
very, very much of a pain to maneuver this thing. It really is. Lots of different colors on him, uh, but at least I got the basic color there for now. So what next we'll do is we'll get some dry brush and browns and we got to kind of just start hitting a lot of these areas and clean them up. Alright, so it's just kind of dry brushing over this area. Try to try to blend this stuff back together best I can. It, it does have, which I don't want to do, but it does have a little bit of black in it. And there's, you got to kind of match it up the best you can because my darkest brown is nowhere near the color. So sadly you gotta throw a little bit of black in with the brown. Gotta fudge it a little bit so I gotta kind of bring it above the crack a little bit more around the arm. Uh, there is a couple pieces here and there. We'll have to sort of hit sadly. Now like over here in the tails, got a little bit of messes and ups. Uh, it's going to be a little bit shiny uh, because of the paint still wet. Plus this paint needs to kind of like be dulled down afterwards anyway. So we're just going to... couple spots on his head that got rubbed off so I'm hitting that as well so a good thing like this is to kind of blend it as you go you know don't be afraid to overly blend it I mean it is a factory paint up so if you grabbed all a uh, thousand of them or however are made and you put them together you probably would see some variations along the assembly line so don't worry if you're kind of fudging it a little bit to kind of you know because I'm bringing the dark a little bit further here we got some little mess up over here uh, you know, I'll have to go in and touch some major areas. So, camera over here a little bit. Bring it down. And it's just regular, you know, just some Liquitex uh, paint. Gotta try to hide the crack as best as we possibly can. Gotta bring the darks down here a little bit. We got some scuffs on the leg here. We got some scuffs over here. So some of the browns will help with this area. Some scuffs over here. So we hit it pretty well. I mean, it's uh, I mean, if you look closely, yeah, you're gonna see it, but it's not as you know really out there anymore. And since this is the uh, the primary you know spot, we got to kind of really kind of touch up some of these areas. So let's just uh, keep touching them up with some dry brushing, and then we'll see what we can do about the feet. So we are all finished up. Uh, it's all done. You can kind of see the neck is pretty much cleaned up. Uh, we hid the crack very, very well. It's nice and durable now. Uh, I touched up a lot of little spots here and there. Uh, the base, uh, with a base like this and a statue like this, 
You don't have to worry about saying, okay, I gotta match this little color perfect for the rest of it. You know, you might as well just run with it and say, okay, we have some spots here, we have some spots here. Let's just kind of dry brush a bunch of new green on the base and make the green vegetation pop a little bit more. Uh, you know, if there's some problems with the ankles and stuff like it did, you kind of hit it on all the ankles. Uh, you know, up on the body and stuff, wherever there was little spots here and there, I kind of ran with the whole entire body and just did more, you know, stuff to it. Uh, it's, it's a dinosaur. He's got a lot of different colors. Uh, it's factory painted by people in a factory. So, you know, just run with it and touch it up and clean it up. It doesn't have to be exactly perfect the way you got it out of the box. You can kind of spruce it up and make it a little bit better. So let me know what you guys think. Thanks for watching and we'll be back with some more videos.